Hello, now that you have mastered the time value of money concept, we're going to look at how to apply this. So the application, the first application we're going to look at uh, loans. All of us um, as investors or as borrowers uh, will encounter loans sometime in our life. There are three major categories of loans. The first one is called a pure discount loan. The second is an interest only loans and the third category are amortized loans. We'll focus on pure discount loan and amortized loan in this chapter. We'll save the interest only loan later on in the chapter when we talk about bond valuation. So we'll talk about that, but just slightly later. In this chapter, we're gonna focus on pure discount loans and amortized loans. So let's take a look at pure discount loan. First, I'm gonna introduce some terminology and concept, and these are very, very important. So, and because they are different for different types of loans. So when you read a loan description, and this is part of the uh, uh, financial liter literacy that I really want all of you to get, because as a consumer, uh, at the minimum after this course, you should be able to read a financial document and understand what you are signing, what you're signing up for. So in a pure discount loan, the term we use for principal, face value, or par value. This term is very important because the the principle is where is how, how you com, your interest is computed based on. However, the principle is the amount that you actually have to pay back at the end of the loan, at the time of maturity. So, for the for now that we have understand um, time value of money, since the principle is due at the end of the loan, this is your future value. So this is very important. The amount that you receive today, if you are signing up for a pure discount loan, is not the principal. You don't get the entire amount that you, quote, borrow. Instead, the amount you receive today is the principal minus the total interest. And this is where the term discount comes from. So the term discount comes from the fact that we are discounting the interest from the principal to get to the amount that you receive today. Because this is the amount that you receive today, this is the present value. So to find out the amount that you receive today, we need to compute the present value. And you can compute the present value using the formula that we've seen before. So amount received today is the present value. Or, of course, you can use the financial calculator. Another important feature of the pure discount loan is that the borrower does not make any payment during the life of the loan, but rather they will repay back the entire amount at maturity. So if you look at the timeline of a pure discount loan, you will look something like this. So this will be the time and the life of the loan. So the term of the loan, let's say, is N years. You will receive the amount today, so this is the amount that you receive today, which is the uh, present value, and then the amount that you receive that you have to pay back in the future is the principal or the face value, and the interest is what you discount from the uh, principal value to get the amount that you receive today. Uh, there are many common instruments that follow the pure discount loan model, one of them is T-bills and U.S. savings bonds. So if you buy a treasury bill or you buy U.S. savings bonds, which is a very common vehicle you can buy at banks, all of those follow a pure discount loan format, meaning that if you buy a U.S. savings bond, you may, you may buy one for $20 today, and that will mature in 20 years, and you'll get, say, $200, but you don't receive any interest payment in the meantime. Even though we're not going to uh, go into details about the calculation of interest-only loan, I want to introduce the concept here as well. So for an interest-only loan, you also have principal or face value and par value. This is also the amount that is due at the end of the loan. Um, the interest that you receive today is based on the principal uh, the amount you receive today is the principal. So in an interest-only loan, you borrow $10,000, let's say, and you have to repay $10,000. So how much you receive today is the same as how much you have to pay at the end of the loan. 
the interest per period is based on the principal times the periodic interest rate. So as a, as a borrower, you have to make interest payment during the life of the loan, but you don't have to make any payment towards principal. So since you're paying off all the interest each period, interest do not accumulate. So this there's no compounding going on with the interest. So you borrow, let's say you borrow ten thousand dollars at ten percent. Then each year you pay one thousand dollars in interest. And then when the loan matures, you'll pay back the ten thousand dollars that you borrow. The most common form of interest-only loans are bonds, and we'll talk a lot more about that in later chapters. Amortized loan is by far the most common form of consumer loans. So we'll introduce um, amortized loan with fixed payments. So the, any car loans, home mortgage, are uh, all amortized loans. So basically you make the same payment, so for it's fixed payment, you, you make the same payment amount in each month. And then at the end of the loan, you will have the entire loan paid for. And that's why it's called amortized, because the way that you can have your loan paid for at the end of the loan is by amortizing the principal and pay part of it over time. So let's take a look at how we can accomplish that. So again, we have principal or face value. This is the contractual value of the loan. The amount that you receive today typically is the principal. So this is the present value. Because we want to pay off part of the principal along with interest each period, the payment amount that we compute is in the form of an annuity. So a lot of times it may be uh, it is easier to understand how an amortized loan works through something called an amortization schedule. The amortization schedule includes the following items. The interest amount that you pay each period. Because you're paying off the loan as time goes on, the interest that you pay each period is different. Um, as the balance of loan goes down, the interest payment also decreases. The principal amount also change because as you pay down on the balance of the loan, a larger portion of the payment will go, will go towards principal. The one thing that remains unchanged is the payment. So the payment amount is fixed, but how within that payment amount, what portion goes, goes towards interest and what portion goes towards uh, principal changes. So interest is computed as the remaining balance times the interest rate. That's relatively straightforward. And since the fixed and the principal amount is your total payment amount, which is fixed, subtract from it whatever the interest portion is, the remaining money goes towards reducing your principal. So reduce the, so the balance, the remaining balance goes down each period by the principal amount. Um, so by using an amortized loan, the borrower will be able to um, pay off the entire loan. And again, each pay, the payment amount itself is fixed, but each payment contains both principal and interest. As the financial market matures and banks become more creative, they look at different types of amortized loan. Traditionally, all loans are fully amortized. A fully amortized loan is loan where if you make the if you make the regular fixed payment, at the end of the loan, you'll be fully paid off. Uh, however, there are new, new types of loans that allow investors uh, or borrowers to um, have more flexibility. One of them is an amortized loan with balloon payment. Balloon payment means that this is a really just a partially amortized loan. What that means is that the way these loans are structured, you will compute the fixed payment based on a hypothetical maturity, which is typically much, much longer. So let's say you may compute the payment based on a 30-year loan. But in reality, the loan is due before that. So the loan may be due in five years, even though you compute the payment assuming that you have a 
in a, in a, in a, hypothetically that you have 30 years to pay it off. So what that means is at the end of five years, when the, room, when the loan is actually due, you will not have paid off the loan. So the loan is only partially amortized. So the best way to see how this work is through an example. So to keep the example simple, we're going to assume annual payment, even though in reality, most consumer loans are paid on a monthly basis. But by using a, an annual loan, that really allows us to uh, go through year by year to see how a loan gets paid off instead of um, 360 payments. So here we have a four-year loan, but the principle remains the same, obviously. So here we have a four-year loan with annual payments. The interest rate is 8% per year, and the principal amount is $5,000. So to analyze the loan, the first step that we want to do is to compute the fixed payment amount. So we have already learned how to do that. We can use our financial calculator. So if we borrow a loan, the, we are borrowing $5,000. So the $5,000 is our present value. 8% is our interest rate. And this is a four year loan with annual payment. So the duration of the loan is four years. So let's clear our calculator again. And we have a loan of $5,000. That's our present value. And this is a four-year loan and 8% in interest. We are computing the fixed payment. So this loan, we have an, an annual payment, so $1,509.60 every year. Next, we're going to look at how the amortization process work. Uh, most importantly, we want to see how the $1,509.60 each year allow us to pay off a loan of $5,000 over a four-year period. So let's look at how an amortization table can be constructed. So in an amortization table, we want to compute the, how the balance goes down over time as well as the principal portion and the interest portion. So to begin with, let's start with year zero. So in year zero, we have a balance, we just take out a loan. So the moment you sign on the dotted line, you owe the bank $5,000. So that's our ending balance. You don't do anything, you just sign the, you just sign the loan. This is a regular loan. So your pay first payment occur at the end of year one. So let's take a look at what you, well, how much interest you owe the bank at the end of year one. So in year one, you owe the bank $5,000 because that's your ending balance. And the interest is 8%. So 8% on $5,000, you can work that out on your calculator. So 8% on $5,000 is $400. So in year one, we owe, we, pay, we owe the bank for the $400 in interest. Um, remember that we pay the bank a total of fifteen hundred and nine dollars and sixty cents. So out of the four hundred, out of that four hundred dollars is considered interest, and therefore eleven hundred and nine dollars and sixty cents will be considered principal. So our principal amount is eleven o nine sixty. And remember that, that last year we owed the bank $5,000, but now we have paid off $1,109. So we will subtract that from our adding, ending balance. So our new ending balance at the end of year one is now $3,890.40. So I encourage you to pause the video and um, repeat this calculation on your own. Next, we're going to move on to year two. So we do something similar. In year two, we once again look at how much we owe the bank in terms of interest. In year two, our interest is based on the new ending balance. So in year two, we owe the bank $3,390.40 as our, as our balance. 
and we have to pay interest on that and the interest is eight percent so it turns out that our interest in the second year is three hundred eleven dollars and twenty three cents so the key is that each year our interest is based on the new ending balance However, what is important is that our payment remain, remains fixed. So in year two, we still pay the bank $1,509.60. But out of that, now only $311.23 is considered interest payment. So the remaining $1,198.30 is now considered principal. And this is the amount that we'll use to reduce our ending balance. So our new ending balance will be $3890.40 minus the principal portion in year two or eleven of eleven ninety-eight thirty-seven which will give us a new balance of $2,692.03. So you can see how each year the interest portion goes down, but the principal portion goes up and the ending balance keeps reducing. So pause the video now, I'm gonna ask you to go ahead and compute the same thing, the interest amount, the principal amount, and the ending balance amount for years three and four. Is this what you get? Did you find that the principal, the interest portion keeps decreasing and the principal portion keeps increasing? And by the end of year four, at the end of the loan, you'll have it, you'll have the entire loan paid for. And you can also add up your total payment and the total interest and what you should find is when you have to add up the total principal it should exactly equal to five thousand dollars so you can see that each payment each fifteen hundred nine dollars and sixty cents includes an interest in the principal portion and when you add up over the year of over the life of the loan the principal portion will have fully pay off the five thousand dollars in addition to doing this by hand, you can also use your financial calculator for you to, to help you um, compute the amortize, um, amortization table. So to use the calculator, the first thing we want to do is reset our calculator. And there are two steps to using the financial calculator. The first step is to compute the payment. So two steps. Step one, let's enter the original loan problem, which is a $5,000 loan, so 5,000 is present value. This is a four-year loan with an interest rate of 8%. Our first step is to compute payment. Once we're at the first step, we move on to the second step. The second step is amortization. So make sure you don't clear your calculator right now. Keep that, so this is step one. Step two, we go into amortization. The second function, amortize. The first display is P1. This is the beginning of your analyzing period. If you scroll down, down arrow, that is the P2 is the end of your analyzing period. So let's start with period one for both. So one enter. So if you scroll back up, you see that P1 is one. P2 is also one because I do one enter. So I'm analyzing the loan for year one. If you scroll down again, you'll see that the ending balance at the end of year one, notice is the same as what you computed by hand. The interest, the principal portion, again, is the same as what you have computed. The interest amount, of course, is $4,000. Uh, we can do the same thing to look at year two. So two, enter, and two, enter. So see that P1 is set to period year two and P2 is also set to year two. Now you scroll down, you'll see that this give us the ending balances of year two, the principal portion in year two, and the interest portion in year two. So you can do that for year three, year four, and so forth. In addition to analyzing it for just one single period, you can also analyze it for and extend the periods. For example, if I set P1 to 1, so I'm analyzing the loan beginning in year 1, 
and now set P2 equals to 4. So I'm analyzing the loan from year 1 through year 4. So 1 through 4. That means I'm looking at the aggregate over 4 years. Over 4 years, not surprisingly, I will have paid off the loan. So at the end of year 4, you'll be totally paid for. The principal portion over 4 years, notice that, is $5,000. And the interest amount is $1,038. So this is how you can use your financial calculator to help you and, uh, analyze the amortization table the same way you would be able to do by hand. Our last example is a mortgage that has a balloon balance. So this is a case where a loan is not fully amortized. So let's say you are given a $100,000 10-year loan with a three-year balloon payment. Further, let's assume that this, is a, this loan has monthly payments. So this is a more, much more complex example, but it's similar to what things that we have seen before. So when we have a balloon loan, what we have to do is to separate the hypothetical balance versus the actual balance. So this is the hypothetical balance, the 10 year. We'll use that number to calculate all aspects of the, of the loan. However, the three year balloon means that you actually have to pay off this loan at the end of year three. So that's what those two numbers represent. So we'll use the 10 year in our calculation. So this is a $100,000 loan. That means the present value, the loan amount is $100,000. Since we are using the 10 year as our computing period, this is, we'll assume you have 10 year. So that's 12 months per year. So that's 120. And we have an interest rate of say 12% where, um, that is given in your slide. So assume that we have a 12% interest, which is 12% per year. So our interest rate will be 12% per year divided by 12, so it's 1% per month. So to analyze this loan, we'll use um, the help of a financial calculator. So we'll have we're starting a new, new, a new loan, so let's clear our register. So in this loan, we have $100,000 is our present value, is a loan that will last 120 months, or we assume that it would be, and the interest rate is 1%. The first step is to compute our payment. So you borrow this loan and you are told by your broker that you only have to pay $1,434.71 each month. So this payment, $1,434.71, seems relatively low. But in reality, the loan is still after three years. So how much do you still owe? Because the important thing about a balloon loan and a partially amortized loan is that when the loan comes due, you don't have the entire loan paid for. So a big question is how much do you still owe the bank? So one way to figure this out is to look at what is our loan balance after three years. And we already have the problem entered into the calculator. So what we're really looking at is the loan balance after three years. So let's go to the amortization table. So second amortize. Uh, what we want to know is the end of three years. So three years times 12 is 36 months. So basically we are looking at what, how much we owe at the end of 36 months. So if we go down, we'll find that we still owe $81,274. So that's, our, that's how much we still owe. Remember that we borrow $100,000 and we have made payment for three years. But after those three years, we still owe the bank $81,274. So it's very important when you take out a balloon loan to understand the amount that you still owe at the end of the loan. Congratulations, now you have mastered the basics of time value of money and you, have a, you will be able to analyze 
most consumer loans that uh, you encounter, and also have a solid foundation for us to go forward um, to analyze more complex uh, corporate finance problems.